now you're ready for the message, aren't you? <laughs> how are you going to do with that? All right, how many people thought the, was that moose, a caribou, whatever it was, was going to eat the carrot, right? Right. right? That was our mindset, he's going to eat the carrot, and the nose is going to be gone. So that was our thoughts going into that. Um, so this uh, message series here, The Battlefield of the Mind, this is based off of a book. The book has like 30 chapters in it, and it's by Joyce Meyer. So uh, it might be something you want to pick up and read. Uh, read here, I'll go ahead and right oh. there. There it is. Hey, Joyce Meyer. Uh, really, uh, there's uh, even some study guides to go up and stuff like that. So if this is something that really clicks with you, uh, I uh, you know, encourage you to pick that up. But, um, so over these next six, seven weeks, I'm just going to kind of hit a couple of uh, parts of this book here and share it. So uh, the battlefield of the mind. Um, boy, our mind is a uh, complex thing, isn't it? Uh, sometimes we see things we don't think we see. Sometimes we hear things we don't think we hear. And sometimes it just really messes with us. Here. Uh, so I think it was last year, maybe two years ago, this uh, this picture here went across Twitter. This one right here. And there was a huge discussion on the color of this dress. Was it blue and black or is it white and gold? How many people see a blue and black dress? And how many see a white and gold dress? Oh, come on. Oh, in this room alone, it's almost 50-50. Did you see that? Right? So, so our brains, uh, I don't know the answer to this. Sorry, you're going to have to. It really is. Sure it is, Amber. Yeah. It was, it was on. But boy, this, it, it brought up all of this discussion and, you know, how did our brain um, process this? And to me, it looks blue and gold. Okay, we'll just go with that. Uh, Let's see, uh, Jake, come up here. Come on, up up here. Let's go, Jake. Give yeah, Jake a big round of applause for coming up here. All right, uh, you're going to do the rest of the message. I'm out. I'm just joking. Look, he's got a chimney on there. All right, um, here's $10. You don't get to keep it. This is another brain thing here, okay? So put out your hand like this. Just these two fingers. There you go. Good. Now, I'm going to put this here like this. Now, I'm going to drop it. And all you have to do is catch it with your two finger. <laughs> all right. I'm going to drop it, Jake. And all you have to do is... Oh. <laughs> now, he guessed at that. He didn't. He didn't. All right. Don't, don't guess when I'm going to drop it. See, you guessed. I didn't drop it. Yeah, I did figure it. Because, see, you thought... So, just watch it. So let your eyes and your brain talk, right? <laughs> One more time. One more time. Notice how our brain won't work it. You see that? <laughs> so our brain, right? Our eyes see it drop. And then our brain says, hey, finger, it's closed. And it's still not fast enough for him to catch it. If you could have caught that, I would have given it to you. So, all right, big round of applause. <laughs> But yeah, isn't that funny how our brain works, right? And there's studies there of those uh, brain quizzes. There's so much we can look at in our brain and, and how we kind of perceive the world. So uh, you know, as we get into this series, uh, how is it that sometimes our brain and our mind kind of gets us into a negative place and how it can actually keep us there, right? So we want to get ourselves out of that. So let's start right here at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. It says, the weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world. On the, contract, on the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. God's given us our brain. God's given us our mind. And, and we get to use it. All right? And so what we do every day is fight against these uh, pretensions and these arguments. And what we need to train ourselves to do, right there in that last line, is to take every thought, everything we have coming through our mind, make it obedient to Christ. Let Christ work, let Christ work in our mind so uh, it comes out that way. I don't know, have you heard that phrase, uh, the idle mind is what? The devil's playground, right? Um, boy, I don't know about you, when you've got nothing going on, or maybe your mind is just idle, and uh, the thoughts that come into it, the ideas that come into it, are probably not very Christ-like or Christ-driven. 
right? And so we got to understand that that happens, and we have to know that we can't let that happen. But instead, make sure that our mind and our thoughts are obedient to Christ. So you see, the mind is the leader of all actions. What we think is usually what we do. So what's guiding your mind is the question. What are you putting in and that's it, making stuff come out? What is guiding your mind when it comes to that? It's easy to get really worked up about stuff. Did you ever do that? That's what I tend to do. I'll play a whole scenario in my head before I even get there. They're going to say this, I'm going to say this. They're going to say this, I'm going to slam the door and walk out. Maybe not, maybe not to that extent, but... What was that? Usher oh, playing the baby, yeah. Jody. I have enough trouble concentrating, right? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, playing self, you know, I talked to somebody once and they're like, do your best to not let, allow that to happen in your mind. But do your best to not play things out before they happen. Don't anticipate, don't assume, just relax and enjoy. it. And know that God has actually been there before you. God's grace is already working on that situation before you can step into the room because of, you pray about it and you meditate on it and you, you give it up to God is what we can do. Romans 8, 5 says, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. So we can see there, right, there's a battle going on of kind of like what we want in our minds, what we expect to happen, as opposed to having the Holy Spirit in our mind and doing what the Holy Spirit wants in our lives. And it's just a process. It really is a process to do this. It's not something that just happens overnight, but it's a continual process with our minds to understand what are we thinking, what are we going to do, which way are we headed, and why are we doing this? Are we letting Jesus guide our thoughts and our actions? It all starts up here with the mind, just like the drop in the dollar. The mind tells our hand when to, when to close. So what's guiding our thoughts? You see, our thoughts turn into actions, and it all starts in the mind. Mind is an extremely powerful tool. There's a, a legend, it's a story, it's a legend, uh, about a young man. He was in his 30s and he worked on the railroad. And this one particular day, uh, he had a couple kids and, and, a, and a wife and a, you know, a whole family. And this particular day, he's working uh, on a refrigerated car. And uh, everybody else is there working along. And uh, the rest of the crew shut down an hour early because it was the boss's birthday. Well, they didn't tell him, or they left, and they forgot him, and he actually got locked inside the refrigerator car. He started worrying right away. He was a worrier. He worried about everything. He started banging on the door. He started screaming out for help, and all he could think about was he was locked inside of this refrigerated car. And then he began to feel numbness in his hands. Then he, he just started to shiver because of the cold, and... and Night fell. He still couldn't get anybody. He thought, if I just close my eyes and lay down, I'll be okay. He worried about it. Legend has it, the next morning they opened up the doors. They found him cuddled in a corner. He was dead. The car was not even plugged in. The refrigerator, it was like a temperature of 55 degrees in there. Nothing at all. And then they checked and there was no signs of anything on his body or anything like that. But he'd simply thought in his head that he knew that he was going to freeze to death. And that's what happened. Romans 12, 2 reminds us, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And if I might throw in a, a, a word here on the next screen here, Johnny, it's the word is every day we need to do this. Every single day when we get up, renew our mind. Every single day, ask God, what is it that we're going to do today? What can I do for your kingdom today, God? Yeah, I know I've got work, and I've got family, and I've got uh, uh, you know, church activities, or I've got a ball game tonight. How is it, what can I do for you, for the kingdom of God? Let those thoughts run our mind every day. Because you see, a negative mind equals a negative life. A positive mind equals a positive life. 
You know what? And just I want to give you a challenge this week. Stay away from every negative thought and word to come out of your mouth for one week. See what it does. Even if you feel like it's going to come out, don't let it come out. You good to go with that? It's going to be. It, what makes it tough, Gary, if I might ask? This is situations at work, at home, right? Uh, with friends, with people you don't even know, uh, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. But start with this, right? Oh my God, it'd be cool to hear some stories. No negative thoughts, no negative words. And you know what? You might just find out you're a little bit more of a negative person than you thought you were. <laughs> or you might find out that, hey, I'm not as negative as I thought I was going to be. Uh, but see how God doesn't work in your life that way. See how God has been around you and has been working graces in your life that you didn't even know existed. Negative mind equals a negative life. Positive mind, positive life. Another story here. Uh, there was a farmer who had a donkey. The donkey got himself stuck in a well. Well, well, well. <laughs> Thank you. So the donkey looked, I mean, the, the donkey, the farmer looked at the donkey and he thought, how am I going to get this donkey out of the well? And he thought, and he thought, he thought, and he, he just could come up with nothing. So he said, the best thing I can do is to bury the donkey, put it out of its misery. So he got himself a shovel, and he had some dirt, and he started throwing dirt into the well. And pretty soon, he noticed something. He kept shoveling the dirt in, but... Uh, he actually saw like the ears of the donkey, and then he saw the, the head of the donkey come up out of the well. He's like, what's going on here? I keep throwing dirt on this donkey to bury it. But when he looked inside, here's what the donkey was doing. He's throwing the, the dirt on the donkey's back. The donkey would shake it off. The dirt would fall off. He'd stomp it down, and he'd push him up a little bit more. A little bit more. He kept throwing in more dirt faster and faster. The donkey would shake it off. He'd stomp it down. Before you know it, that donkey stepped right out of the well and went on with life. Now, that is some positive thinking, isn't it? Right? That is some positive thinking. I don't know, have you ever found yourself in a well? Sometimes I even feel like the donkey, if you know what I mean, friends, right? That got you in the well in the first place. Because, see, when you're in the well and you look up, you see all these people looking in. Like that, right? And sometimes you think that I am in such a bad place, I'm in such a negative spot right now, that every single person in my life knows it and is looking down at you. That's not the case. That is not the case at all. Maybe some people are looking down. Maybe some people are caring, they're worried about you, and thinking, how can I help you out of this well? But sometimes we find ourselves in the well, and it feels like the whole world knows we're in there, and they're laughing at us, and they're saying bad things about us, and that is not the case. It's easy to get ourselves in the well, and sometimes hard to get us out. But you know, I like the donkey. Sometimes you got to shake it off, stomp it down, and keep on moving. You can't give up. Don't give up. Every little change is affecting your life. Every single little positive change that you do is affecting your life. It's drawing you closer to God, and it's making a more positive life for you. Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So we can put that thought in our brain, that very positive thought, that whatever you're going through. I know some of you have, a, have had a few couple rough weeks here lately. Whatever you're going through, God is using that for His good, for, to work in His good. It may not feel good right now, it may not think it's real good, but it is. So we can know that uh, a positive thought in our mind, in this battlefield of the mind, that whatever is going on, we can give praise to God and say, thank you, God, for helping me. You see, when you begin to see God's good plan in your thinking, you begin to walk in it. Now it's become part of you. Now you understand a little bit more. You know what? God's got this. I'm okay. Things are going to turn out right. I'm going to stop being negative. I'm going to stop shouting out. I'm going to stop calling my friend who, who gossips all the time and pulls me down into that well all the time. I know that God is going to take me. And I know God's good. I know God's going to take care of me. So stop letting your thoughts steal your joy. Um, I'm going to call my wife up here real quick. Come on, Jennifer, get on up here. Let's a round of applause for Jennifer. As we were talking about this today, Jennifer, you mentioned when you were at home with the, uh, the young kids, this was a battlefield for you. 
Would you tell us a little bit about that? Just oh yeah, I was, I was a stay-at-home oh, yeah. mom, and I wasn't a very good stay-at-home mom, in the sense that I really needed to be around other people. <laughs> and being at home by myself with little kids that couldn't talk back to me, it was hard, it was really hard. And um, there were many, many times when I would uh, wake up in the morning, you know, I didn't have a real hard day or anything ahead of me, and I'd get up and I'd do all my things, I'd get, you know, the baby fed, and I'd do some laundry or some dishes or whatever, you know, just your normal day. It wasn't a bad day, I wasn't going out, um, I didn't receive any phone calls or anything, but through my day, something would pop into my head. And you know, I'd take that one little negative event, and I'd stir it around in there, and I'd think about it, I'd kind of get a little sweaty about it, and I'd get a little ticked off, and I'd go, oh, dang it. So, I can't think of something, so I'd get on and I'd try to do something else. That little thought come right back in my head again. I'd stir that around a little more and bake a little again. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Keith would come home and I'd be, Rawr! you know, he's like, what happened to you? Did you have a bad day? I'm like, no, I, I really didn't. Well, what happened? Why are you so grumpy? And I would think through my day. I hadn't seen anybody. I hadn't talked to anybody. It was all in my head. And it wasn't anything new that had happened. But because of my loss in that battlefield, in my mind, I wasted a good day, you know? And it was, it was one of those things I couldn't get a hold of changing that around to the better. Now, I've become much better at it now. But back in those days, I wasn't very good at it. And I'd come home and poor Keith would end up with this really grumpy wife for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Deborah. <laughs> Psalm 118 for it tells us, 24 tells us, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So just like she's talking about her days that sometimes would just, uh, you know, go to pot. No, these are the days that you know, every day has been made by God. It's been a gift that's given to us, and we can rejoice and be glad in that. Finally, Philippians 4.8 says, remember, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, worthy, think about such things. When you feel yourself headed down the well, you feel yourself on the edge, ready to, to, to go negative. I, I know what I do. I pop in some uh, worship music, and I'll crank it up, and I'll just push those thoughts out of my head. Or I'll, I'll call somebody that I know is very affirming and uplifting and encouraging and say, hey, you know, what's going on? Just kind of get your mind up. Maybe get yourself up and move and, and do something different. But look at this list of wonderful things that we can think of instead of just dwelling on the negative and thinking, I'm going to lose this battle. No, that's not God's plan for us. God's plan is good. And He's going to, once we, we, we receive that and understand that, we can begin to live it. All right?